parenting. Parenting is truly a very challenging skill to master. Why so? First of all, our children are growing and we can't stay the same as parents, right? We can't parent the same way. We find it challenging to parent all our children the same way because they're all different. They're diverse. They're diverse in the way they act, in the way they react, and of course, what they need. In order for them to thrive successfully, we try to do so much as parents. Send them to the best schools, give them the best trips, the best home environment. We try to give them everything they need on an emotional level, physical level, and we really try to help them become the best people they can be in this world. However, what is the best blessing you can give to your children? It's obviously not something they can hold, it's not something that they can do, but the best blessing you can give to your children is truly the blessing of the blessing that we have for boys and the blessing that we have for girls when we bless our children Friday night. Many people bless on different times of the times throughout the year, throughout the week, different holidays, family events. However, Friday night, is the time when we bless our boys. May you be like Ephraim and Menashe. And we bless our girls to be like the four, the four mothers, right? Rachel, Rivka, Sarah, and Leah. Now why? Why is that so? Why are we blessing the boys to be like Ephraim and Menashe? They're not the forefathers, even though the forefathers were tzaddikim or righteous people. And then we're blessing our girls to be just like their foremothers. And today we're going to learn why. As Yaakov's life nears its end, he blesses each of his children. When he reaches Ephraim and Menashe, he proclaims that all of Cloud Israel will bless their children to be just like them. Till this day, every Friday night, we bless our sons to be like Ephraim and Menashe. However, we bless our girls to be like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. It seems like it doesn't match up, but the truth is it very much matches up, and we will learn why. Ephraim and Menashe had an incredible attribute that made them more special than everybody else. Yaakov's children, most of them um, were Shvatim, and meaning they were the 12 tribes. They had the good fortune to grow up in a spiritual cocoon of Yaakov's home. It was nurturing, it was loving, it was spiritual. In other words, they ate, drank, and breathed righteousness, holiness. Wherever they, they were surrounded with the purity of their holy parents and siblings. However, Ephraim and Menashe were raised in the spiritual vacuum of Egypt. The environment they were brought, brought up in, it was so completely opposed to their ancestral principles. And, and temptation surrounded them constantly. Yet they remo remained loyal to their faith, the, to the face of their forefathers whom they never even met. They were so loyal. And so connected to Hashem and so close to Hashem. Ephraim and Menashe did not consider exchanging their Judaism to benefit their social standing or to integrate culturally with those around them. They were deeply rooted in Judaism and in the connection to Hashem. This devotion is what we pray that our sons too will demonstrate towards Hashem and to our heritage. We pray that our boys, our sons, no matter what comes their way, no matter what oppos opposition comes their way, no matter where they live, which backdrop they fall into when they're getting older and living their own lives, we hope that they are like Ephraim and Menashe, that no matter what, they stay closely connected to Hashem, close to Hashem, and have a relationship with their Creator. Just like Ephraim and Menashe, we bless them to stay connected no matter where they may find themselves in this 
Golos in this exile. We bless our girls for exactly the same thing. Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah all lived in a very difficult time and all lived against a very opposing backdrop to what they believed in. Sarah, her father was Haran. She grew up in the city of Ur Hasdim. This city, during those times, completely worshipped idols. Nearly every house had chapels and altars, and, and they were used for household gods. The religion was polytheism. The ancient texts gave over 5,000 different names for an infinite number of gods. This was the environment where Sarah was brought up. Her fam family's most important business was that of making and selling idols. Despite her surroundings, Sarah Imeno, Sarah our foremother, searched and found Hashem together with Abraham and spread the word of Hashem's oneness. So despite her backdrop, she was loyal and steadfast in her beliefs in Hashem, and that's why we bless our girls to be like Sarah. Rivka lived in the idol-worshipping home of her, of her father, Besuel. Besuel was the king of the city of Nahor. He instituted the law of the first marital rights. They allow the king to be physically intimate with every single girl before she got married. Now, the subjects consented. Society was so outraged by this law. But they said that he can pass it as long as his own daughter, Rivka, is also included in this law. It was just as Eliezer arrived in Haran that Rivka was to be taken and exploited by her own father as she reached of age. Hashem brought about the sudden death of Besuel in order to save Rivka from this disgrace. This was the cruel and immoral home Rivka was raised in. Yet, Rivka was righteous and untainted. Unlike those around her, the enormous chesed she displayed was genuine. She was a genuinely holy and righteous person. She worked on this. In other words, she worked on staying close to Hashem. It wasn't natural, looking at her backdrop. Rivka maintained her purity and connection to Hashem in the midst of the corrupt environment. Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah were brought up in a home of the evil Lavan. He was no, known for his dishonesty. He was an idol worshiper, and their home was filled with many, many idols. Both Leah and Rachel were connected with Hashem, and they yearned to be married to the Tzadik Yaakov. Their intense desire for purity set them apart from the society, society around them. Despite the evil surroundings Arimahos were brought up in, they found and clucked to Hashem. They were righteous in all their ways. They shunned the culture around them and adhered to the ways of purity, no matter how unpopular they were. We therefore bless our daughters to be like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, and we have to have the strength to resist the surge of corruption and to cling faithfully to the ways of Hashem. It's so challenging in our time. We guard what our children look at, who they play with, uh, how they interact in public, how they interact in the home, what, how much they use the phone, whether it's filtered or not, and uh, where we go on vacations, we think about. We think about which schools our kids go to, what extracurricular activities they're involved in, and we try to really harness uh, that in a way that we protect them, we want the best influences, you know, the best of friends, the best of neighbors, the best uh, of people to constantly help them grow to be well-developed, good people, right? Every single parent wants only the best for their children. However, we must remember there's only so much we can do physically as parents. And as our children grow, we may know in the beginning when they're only a toddler who they play with. And when they're starting preschool, right, what they're doing. Then we start asking questions to the teacher. What are they doing? Who are they with? What do they eat? And lo and behold, the time comes when they are slowly and surely out of your home. 
and you have no idea what they're doing, who they're with, what they're up to. And we hear sometimes crazy stories, but we must know that parenting is 90% prayer. How much time do we devote to pray for our kids' success? We need to bless them with the ultimate blessing, the best blessing of all, for them to stay steadfast and connected to Hashem no matter where they go. If they have to make a choice between two options, may they make the right choice, the choice Hashem wants from them. That's what we pray for. We pray for them to put their best foot forward in life. May they stay in the Torah path. We need to devote more time to for prayer. And a practical tip for that would be Friday night when we light the Shabbos candle. When the woman goes to the mikvah, And when the woman bakes challah. Those are the times when you don't really want to pray. Because you just want to set up the table for Shabbat. When you don't really want to pray when you're making challah. Because you just you have other things to cook. You want it to rise so you can bake it. And, and in the mikvah, you're so uncomfortable praying for holy good things. You don't look... Uh, uh, your best presentable self and you feel like you gotta rush out you have things to do the day needs to move on and those are the times that are so incredibly powerful that we need to pray for the success of our children for them what is success success is not for them to be money makers in this world that's not success people who are rich are more challenged than people who are poor People who are rich, um, it's a bigger test than for people who have exactly what they need. So we must pray for the children's success. Not for them to be rich necessarily, for them, for them to have parnasat to vay, yes. Parnasat to come from the right place. Parnasat to va, which means it's kosher money. For them to have parnasat to va, for them to have good health. For them to be successful in life. And that means navigating this world successfully their life successfully, meaning living through the prism of the Torah, through the values of the Torah. And that's what we want from Hashem. Uh, we want Hashem to bless them with that. We can't do it alone. We do so much as parents, as mothers. We plan, we look into the future for our kids just for them to do the right thing, for them to be harnessed, for them to be protected. Yet, where is our prayers? Are we praying? There's no limit to prayer. And you could pray at any time, anywhere, in whatever language. Hashem hears you. And let your children hear you pray for them. Let them hear how emotional you are, wanting only what's best for them. Because when a child sees that a parent is truly night and day enveloped in the well-being of their child, the child will want to succeed. The child will want to make their parents proud. We know that Hashem loves us, each and every single individual, so, so much. He loves us so, so much. Hashem is not someone who can't wait to punish us. Can't wait for us. Oh, there you go. You slipped up. There you go. That's a punishment. Many people view Hashem that way. That's not true. Hashem loves you more than you will ever love yourself. Each and every one of us is His only child. He's only rooting for your success. He's only rooting for your success. And He loves you so, so much. So that knowledge that Hashem loves me so, so much, I want to impress Him. I want to make Him happy. As Jewish, Jewishly we say it, I want to give Him nachat. I want to give Him parental joy. And that's what we want from our children. We want to give them love. We want to give them physically, in our hishtadlos, in our uh, abilities, the best things that we can. We want to protect them, nurture them, but most importantly, we want to make sure that we pray for them. Glezat Hashem. May we merit, may our daughters and our sons give us much nachat, parental joy, as they dedicatedly follow the path of Torah with love and devotion, just like our imahos, our foremothers, Ephraim and Menashe. Leah Abramov being and becoming awakening awareness of your greatness and potential.